Hello everyone and thanks for coming to this talk. The title of my talk is Control by Function Based Attack Recovery with Provable Guarantees. It's a joint work with my previous postdoc advisors, Professor Ricardo Santelis and Professor Alvaro Cardenas at UC Santa Cruz. So the motivation uh, for this study comes from the fact that uh, we are surrounded by cyber physical systems such as autonomous connected system where cars are the physical components and they're in the connections or their con uh, connection to the local network or to the satellites as the cyber component as well as uh, grid system is another example where again we have different uh, physical components as well as the cyber components and we can also imagine a uh, multi-agent system where drones or ground stations or the satellite are the physical components and their interconnections with each other as well as with the ground station is the cyber component. And the reason we are interested in studying cyber physical system is that they are vulnerable to cyber attacks. And we have seen many of these cyber attacks being successfully launched in these uh, on this industrial system in the past few years, uh, which can potentially lead to system failure, loss of money, as well as human life in certain cases. So it is crucial uh, for safe operations of these cyber physical systems that fast and effective response systems uh, are developed, and particularly uh, for safety critical missions where safety is of major importance, uh, these uh, algorithms or methods should also have provable guarantees that we can guarantee that safety will never be violated even under a worst possible uh, cyber attack. But the problem with prior work is that Either there are no formal guarantees on safety or the methods that are able to provide for, uh, formal guarantees on safety uh, use uh, these computationally expensive tools such as forward reachability based analysis. And uh, in this work, uh, what we want to do is design methods that are computationally inexpensive and can be implemented uh, uh, on board uh, for real time a recovery of system from cyber attacks uh, using something called as control value functions. And let's see what that method looks like. So, first, I'll present the fault model uh, that we consider in this paper. So, we consider a general uh, control of fine nonlinear dynamical system where the system uh, that we are given a set S, which is what we are going to call a safe set. And the input is essentially uh, decomposed into two components. So one of the component is vulnerable input and the other component is a secure input. And essentially the idea is that these vulnerable inputs are the ones that can be attacked uh, through external agents or the uh, external adversaries and the secure inputs are the inputs that cannot be attacked and cannot be manipulated. So as an example, consider uh, a quad rotor where one of the actuators or one of the uh, motors is essentially vulnerable and it can be attacked by an adversary and three uh, motors or uh, actuators are secure and they cannot be attacked. And so what this leads to essentially is loss of partial or even full actuation in some, some of the control surfaces for uh, these dynamical systems. And so in general, what we are considering in this work is cyber attack on input signals. So the problem formulation is as follows. So again, given this system uh, with uh, safe set S and an input constraint set uh, calligraphic Q, we wish to uh, design uh, an attack detection mechanism that can detect that there's something uh, wrong going on with the system and an input assignment policy such that uh, for a subset of this set, uh, if the system starts there, so essentially we want we wish to compute a set of initial conditions and uh, uh, the input uh, policies such that the resulting closed loop system from starting from this set remains in the safe set at all times and thus it won't violate safety. So uh, for that we need to uh, we need to have conditions that guarantees safety under cyber attacks. And for that, we use this notion of control value function. So let me review this very quickly. Uh, so for a general uh, control of fine system of this form, let's assume that the value function, uh, let the, the safe set is given as a zero sub-level set of a function, which we are going to call value function uh, moving forward uh, as a, uh, in this particular form. And the idea is uh, that if we define a function h as essentially the time derivative of function b along the trajectory of the system, and if it is non-positive at each point on the boundary of the safe set, then uh, 
we call this function b as a control variable function. And it has been shown in literature that uh, if b is indeed a CBA or control variable function, then this set is can be rendered forward invariant with a smooth enough control input. Uh, and what it means is that if the system starts in this set, it remains in the set at all future times. Now, this is under the nominal conditions. That we have com complete authority in the control input, and then there are no, uh, no uh, adversary attacks. So what happens when there are attacks? And what we do essentially is we modify those conditions. So now we consider this model where some of the inputs are secure, some are vulnerable, and we still use the same function h, but instead of taking infimum over all possible inputs, we say that we consider worst case possible uh, adversarial attack, and we still want this function h to be non-positive. Again, recall that h is the time derivative of b, which is essentially b dot along the system trajectory, and we wish it to be non-positive even under worst case possible adversarial attack at each point on the boundary of the same set. So this is the condition that we use for uh, guaranteeing safety under cyber attacks. And the important thing is that we are able to consider any uh, all possible adversarial attacks. So now the approach is as follows uh, to solve this the problem that I presented earlier on. So essentially we design uh, the nominal feedback law that we are going to use whenever there is no attack. Uh, then we design a secure feedback or safe feedback law, uh, which only uh, assigns an input to the secure input because we don't have any control over the vulnerable input when the system is indeed under a cyber attack. And then we design an attack mecha uh, detection mechanism to switch between these two policies uh, so that we can keep the system uh, safe. So before moving to the detection uh, and design policy, what we need to note here is that whenever the system is under attack, we actually cannot compute the exact value of the time derivative of B because it actually depends upon the control input that uh, the system is using. And when there is an attack, we do not know what the adversarial input looks like. We do not know what that signal uh, looks like. So for that, uh, what we do is we use a first order approximation of the function B dot using the consecutive values of, uh, of the barrier function itself along the system trajectory. And so using Taylor expansion, uh, we can uh, define this B dot hat, which is an approximation of B, B dot, and uh, we can bound the difference between the uh, estimated value of B dot and the actual value of B dot along system trajectory by this term, where if we assume that the second derivative of uh, function B is bounded by some parameter eta, then uh, we essentially get this kind of a bound. And so what we are going to do is we are going to use uh, b dot hat in place of b dot for designing a detection box. So note that under nominal condition, uh, this expression would be non-positive. This expression is essentially an upper bound on actual time derivative of b dot. And uh, so what it means is that it would be non-positive. And uh, whenever there's an attack, uh, this might not be positive. So uh, now, we do not want uh, uh, to postpone the attack detection until we hit the actual boundary of the safe set because then uh, it might be too late. And if there are any disturbances or uh, some delays in the, uh, in the switching policy, then uh, it might lead to violation of safety. So what we do is we define a subset of the safe set as basically a minus C sublevel set of the function uh, B, uh, where C is a positive number, and we define a tag flagging uh, a time instant as follows. So the idea is that whenever the system leaves uh, this set, but is still inside the safe set, and uh, this quantity is greater than this function gamma, which basically is an assumption on uh, how fast uh, the system, uh, the the function b can decay along the nominal input. So essentially, we still allow uh, the barrier function to uh, grow along the nominal dynamics, but with a uh, finite amount of uh, at, at a given rate dictated by this function gamma. And so what it means is that if uh, this quantity was less than uh, gamma on the right-hand side, then we were still uh, under the nominal regime and the system was nominally operating. But if this is, uh, if uh, this is greater than gamma, then something might be going wrong. And so we flag that there is an attack. 
So uh, with this detection mechanism, the controller input assignment uh, policy looks like this. So when, uh, let's say let's say that these are the input interval, uh, these are the time intervals when the when there is an attack on the system, and we consider multiple of these intervals. It's possible in our framework to consider multiple attacks on the system, and uh, the input for the vulnerable uh, inputs looks like this. So whenever there is an attack, the attack signal UA, which is a completely random unknown signal, is what is going to be injected to the system. And when there is no attack, we would use the nominal input or the nominal feedback log that we are using, designing for the vulnerable inputs. Now, uh, for the secure input or for the safe input, uh, whenever we detect uh, an attack or whenever we flag that there is an attack, what we do is we use the secure input assignment kappa subscript is for the maximum uh, possible duration of the attack. So we assume that each of these intervals are bounded by bar uh, uh, capital T. And so whenever we detect that there is an attack, we use this maximum interval for uh, uh, for the secure uh, feedback policy. And then we switch to the nominal feedback policy until the next uh, attack is flat. And so, uh, this is how we design a nominal input. So the idea is that uh, because the system is controller fine, we can set up a QP or a quadratic program and the safety condition or the barrier function condition appears as a linear inequality in the constraint. And we can also consider the input bounds, uh, the calligraphic cube that I was talking about in the earlier slides. And if we assume that that's a polytopic set, then again, it appears as a, uh, as a linear constraint. And so what we end up, uh, here is essentially a convex optimization problem, which can be solved very efficiently. So uh, this is uh, the uh, nominal feedback policy. Similarly, we can also uh, define uh, another QP uh, to assign the safe uh, control policy, uh, which is kappa. And what is important to note here is that we assume that uh, the input uh, part of the input can be vulnerable, and so we take supreme for all possible vulnerable input. And so we don't design the uh, vulnerable inputs in this particular case. We just say that uh, we are only designing, or rather we are only using the safe input uh, for satisfying the barrier condition. And so this solution of the QP would result into a safe input, which would be able to keep the system safe, even under cyber attacks. So the main, uh, result statement reads something like this, and it's just an informal version, a more formal result is present in our paper. Uh, so the idea is that under certain smoothness assumptions on the barrier function B and the system dynamics and existence of certain parameters such as uh, a C greater than zero, uh, the two QPs that I presented on previous slides are feasible and have continuous solutions. So the first QP with uh, which designs nominal input is actually feasible on the interior of the whole uh, set S. And it is also, uh, the, the solution is also continuous on this set. And the second QP which assigns input to the secure or uh, the safe inputs uh, under an attack uh, is feasible on this set and again has a uh, continuous solution on this set. And, uh, Along with these, uh, uh, with these uh, two policies, along with the detection mechanism, the resulting closed loop system is safe for any initial condition in the interior of this particular set. So that's the main result. Now let me present a case study which involves quadrator control under a cyber attack on one of its motors. So in this paper, we consider full six degree of freedom uh, quadrator dynamics, and we consider the case that when one of the motors is uh, vulnerable and is attacked by an adversary, and without loss of generality, you see that motor number four is attacked, and we know that motor number four will be attacked, but we can uh, relax this assumption and can actually detect which of the motors might be actually attacked. And the objective for the quadrota is just to over at a five meter altitude. It's a simple objective, but we can uh, we can use this to demonstrate how effective the presented mechanism is, and we can actually use the same uh, detection and uh, switching policy for even more problem statements. And the safety requirement for the quadrotor is very simple, just not crash on the ground. 
right? So uh, this is uh, a simulation video where uh, we show when an attack is launched and when a detection mechanic, uh, detection happens, and you would see that at this particular uh, instance when the quadrotor reaches its full height, uh, an attack is launched, and then another attack is launched, and it's detected and whatnot. So this is this plot shows the attack, uh, attack activity as well as the detection activity. As you might see here, uh, there are certain attacks that are non-detected, and then there are certain uh, detection uh, flags, and there was actually no attack, right? So it had, we, we still have some false positives and uh, false negatives, but the idea is that we are not designing the attack mechanism, uh, the detection mechanism to clearly identify when there's an attack, but rather the idea is to keep the system safe and we show that uh, this particular recovery mechanism is able to keep the system safe. Uh, so we do not use uh, this detection mechanism and switching policy, the, uh, in the attack signal that was launched on the hard rotor is able to crash it on the ground. And, and with the detection policy and switching mechanism, it's we are able to do the recovery and keep overing also. Not perfect overing, but we do not have the full uh, control authority also on the system. So it's oscillating on the ground. With that, uh, let me conclude my slide. So we designed an attack detection mechanism using control behavior function condition, and then we use quadratic uh, program-based mechanism for designing the actual control input, and then we combine them uh, in a switching law uh, for switching from the normal control to uh, secure uh, control whenever uh, an attack is flagged. Future work uh, involves uh, essentially considering more general attacks on CPS. In particular, uh, we would like to study uh, cases when both the sensors as well as actuators are attacked. So if the system uh, sensors are attacked, then at the time of design feedback law, we would have uh, more issues because we would not have access to the actual system state. And when actuators are attacked, you already saw how it can affect uh, the conditions that can guarantee safety. So simultaneous consideration of system attacks on uh, sensors and actuator uh, has never been considered in the literature, and that's something that we would like to study. Thank you, and please uh, email me if you have any questions, uh, and thanks for your attention.